Richmond said they had no chance, zero, at re-signing Jalen Brunson. Did uh, Steve Nash parents get involved? Fuck it. In the last video, we talked about the Dallas Mavericks and how they've been struggling. And in that video, I kept referencing management in the front office and how they kept making multiple mistakes that have led to the demise of the Dallas Mavericks. And I can't lie, there's one person that I didn't really talk about a whole lot because I wanted to dedicate an entire video to them. Of course, if you clicked on this video, you know I'm talking about Mark Cuban. Now, before I even talk about basketball, I want to ask the question, when you think Mark Cuban, what do you think? Well, me, I would think investor. I would think someone that is a superstar on Shark Tank. I would think a billionaire. There are so many words you can use to describe Mark Cuban. And overall, he is a successful guy, and that's something that no one can take away from him. And I'm just gonna be honest, as a businessman, I respect Mark Cuban and everything that he's done. But I say that to say that Mark Cuban has been destroying the Dallas Mavericks behind the scenes. And most people are not really looking at Mark Cuban as saying, oh, he's a bad owner. I've seen a few people here and there, but it's not a majority. In fact, most people don't know how bad of an owner he's been lately. Now, it would be a very hard argument for me to say, oh, he's one of the worst owners of all time because I'd be lying to you. When Mark Cuban bought the Dallas Mavericks in 2000, they were worth about $285 million. Now, don't get me wrong, that is a lot of money, but compared to the $3.3 billion they're worth today, that is a crazy investment. Also, it would be impossible for me to call him one of the worst owners ever because he has an NBA championship ring, something not every team can say. But there have been some moves in his 23 years with the Dallas Mavericks that people are really starting to look at with a different perspective. Just to kind of warm things up, I want to talk about the Kyrie trade that literally just happened. I'm not going to try to go too in-depth because I just made a video about it if you want to check it out, but let me just say this. When you look at the trade and you're asking who won that trade, I'm going to easily say the Brooklyn Nets. While the Mavericks did get Kyrie Irving, a player that is clearly better than both players that were given, you have to look at the fact that Brooklyn got rid of a player that did not want to be there and they got key rotation players. However, the Mavericks, they got rid of two important players. And sure, replacing Kyrie Irving for Spencer Dinwiddie is not the craziest thing ever. In fact, I think it's impressive. But you got rid of Dorian Finney-Smith, a player that some people are underplaying. I know he's not the most popular name, but if you've been paying attention to the Mavericks, you know he was a key important part. In his peak with the Mavericks, he was a great 3 and D player. In fact, I'd argue he was one of the biggest reasons why the Mavericks made it so far last year. Okay, but why am I talking about this trade and why am I blaming this on Mark Cuban as him ruining the franchise? Well, there is a reason why the Mavericks were a considerable playoff team before they got Kyrie. But then the moment Kyrie joins, the Mavericks are fighting to make the play-in. Not the playoffs, the play-in. And at the time of recording this, they are not even in the play-in just yet. They're still fighting. Mind you, the question of is this team a contender was being asked when they got Kyrie Irving. Now you flash forward a little while and you see, oh wow, this team is not good. And I'd agree with you. Now, I don't think it's a stretch to say last year's Mavericks team was better than this year's. And there's a reason for that. So yesterday, I saw an article that stated Mark Cuban said that Jalen Brunson's father got in the way of negotiations. Now I look at this as one of two ways. Either A, Mark Cuban completely regrets what happened because Jalen Brunson is an all-star caliber player and he let this man walk and would not pay him the money he deserves. Or maybe he's just trying to justify a reason why they didn't re-sign Jalen Brunson because it is kicking them in the ass right now. But I don't want you guys to think this is a new thing where a player will be on the Mavericks, they'll ball out and they won't get the contract money they deserve, they'll leave and they'll really ball out on a new team, i.e. Tyson Chandler in 2011 and Steve Nash in 2006. When you think of the 2011 Dallas Mavericks, you're going to think of Dirk Nowitzki, you're going to think of Jason Terry, you're going to think of some great players. But one player that I feel like most people kind of just forget about is Tyson Chandler. Tyson Chandler was a very important reason why the Dallas Mavericks defense was so well in their championship run. Yet, when it came time to pay him, Mark Cuban did not do that and he let him go to the New York Knicks. The following year, Tyson Chandler would win Defensive Player of the Year and I'd argue he had his best years on the Knicks. Steve Nash was a similar story. Right after he left the Mavericks because Mark Cuban let him walk, he became an MVP for the Phoenix Suns. The point I'm trying to make is that Mark Cuban is not afraid to let players go and then regret it later. Some of you may not remember that or even know that Mark Cuban did that because if this got brought up a lot more often, I'd argue that people would think Mark Cuban is a terrible owner, but you really don't hear people say that. In fact, most people think he is one of the best owners in the NBA. And I have a theory 
on why that's true. Have you guys started to notice that a lot more players have podcasts or YouTube channels or YouTube channels for their podcasts? For example, Patrick Beverly, who is someone that is one of the most hated players in the NBA. Yet, when I watch these clips of Patrick Beverly just talking, I don't have an issue. I'm not quick to hate on him. In fact, I find what he says pretty interesting. In fact, I've listened to a couple episodes of his podcast while editing YouTube videos, and I'm just going to be honest with you. Patrick Beverly seems like the type of guy that, well, I don't drink alcohol, I would drink a Shirley Temple with. Like, he seems pretty calm off the court and a guy you could definitely have a good conversation with. But on the court, I would want nothing to do with this man. Guys like Paul George and Draymond Green, hell, even in the bubble in 2020, Matisse Thibel had a YouTube channel. And I'm not going to lie, it was some great ass content I wish he would upload again. But it's also one of the reasons why I love Matisse Thibel. He's one of my favorite players. Yet most of you guys probably don't even know who this guy is. And I'm not going to blame you because he's a rotation player on the Portland Trailblazers. But the reason why I like Matisse Thibel so much as a player now is because of that personal connection you feel. When you get an insight onto someone's life, you start to look at this person with a different perspective. Now let's apply the same logic to Mark Cuban. When it comes to the most popular owners, like as far as popularity, besides the Bus family, I would give it to Mark Cuban as the most popular owner. And like I said in the intro, there is a reason for that. He's a billionaire. He's one of the most likable guys in the NBA. Well, unless you're a referee in 2006. The point I'm trying to make is that we look at Mark Cuban from a different perspective and we kind of just give him a pass without even knowing it. Now, just to be clear, because I know some Mavericks fans will obviously watch this, I'm not saying every single Mavericks fan does this, but I know that a lot of NBA fans as a whole kind of ignore it. And also to be clear, I don't hate Mark Cuban. In fact, like Patrick Beverly, Mark Cuban is the type of guy that I would love to sit down and have a Shirley Temple with. And if you want to talk about from a businessman perspective, I f can respect this guy. Everything he's done for the business world and Shark Tank and things of that nature, I respect him. But this is an NBA channel, and from an NBA perspective, Mark Cuban is not the best owner. In fact, there are so many free agency moves that I didn't even get into and players that they got rid of and that they brought in, like Kristaps Porzingis. That's a whole other thing to talk about. Also, why the hell do they have Christian Wood just for him to sit on the bench? Like as a Suns fan, I was terrified when they got Christian Wood considering the ass beating that he did to us, but yet I'm not even gonna have to worry about that guy. Now I know Mark Cuban is not perfect and quite frankly, no owner in the NBA is going to be perfect, but I've seen time and time again, Mark Cuban mess up and people just don't talk about it or they give him a pass. Now I don't really see a situation where Mark Cuban's going to sell the Mavericks from all the interviews I've seen. He's very happy with what he's doing, but I just don't see a situation where the Mavericks are going to be anywhere to contend for the next couple years because of the move that Mark Cuban continues to make. And quite frankly, and this is a whole other topic, but Luka Doncic might be leaving. And if you guys want to play a crazier hypothetical, think about this. Kyrie Irving was traded for Dorian Finney-Smith and Spencer Dinwiddie and some picks. So in this equation, the Mavericks have lost two players. Well, Kyrie Irving is going to be an unrestricted free agent and the Mavericks go after him, but Kyrie's going to test free agency. So now that is three players you could possibly be losing. And in reality, you would have gotten nothing from it, but a bad playoff run or not even playoff front you didn't even make the playoffs and also this move was made to please Luka Doncic because Luka was not happy in Dallas from what we knew and yet you think this is gonna make him happy no there is a chance that Luka is gonna ask for a trade remember superstars are not afraid to ask for trades anymore they are going to be aggressive and they want to win and Luka Doncic may not have time for the Mavericks to keep messing around and ruining his team at this point it's only a matter of time before Luka finally calls it quits and Mark Cuban is gonna be looked at in a different perspective.